Welcome to episode 7 of Illustrator for Noobs and today we're going to talk about drop shadows. What I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange these cogs in a line so we can see the differences of the different what we do to the drop shadow and how it can affect what it looks like. Um, we'll start with the first one. You go to effect, stylize and then drop shadow and you end up with the default setting here. If we hit the preview you can see what it does. Um, in this case it's got the light source over on the top left because the shadow comes down to the bottom right um, and that can change you know um, according to what you're doing so let's just hit OK and leave that as the default and then we'll compare all the others. So we'll move to the next one. Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. Right, with all these cogs, I've made the top right lighter, so that's an indication that the light source is also from the top right. So therefore, the shadow should be over on the bottom left. So what we're going to do is hit the preview. The X and Y, the X moves over to the right, and the Y moves down. So we want the X to move over the other way, so we'll have to hit, we'll put it as a minus. So it's still the same distance going to the right and but down to the left, you see what I mean? In order to see that in the preview, you have to kind of click onto another box so that you can see what's happened. So here we have the light source exactly where we want on the top right with the shadow coming over to the bottom left. Um, let's just try another one. If we go stylize stop drop shadow again. Now with the blur it's quite a diffused shadow um, but if you were to reduce the blur you can see it's a much much sharper shadow and that gives the impression that the light source is very a very bright harsh light and so therefore the um, shadow is equally so so if you were to drop it to zero it's just a black version so it's a very very hard sharp um, shadow and then the higher up it goes the more diffused it gets so therefore the light source and the light source and the, the light itself within where the cogs are are pretty similar, it just gives a slight shadow there. Um, so let's just, so you can see that it's quite different in terms of the impression it gets. And the other thing is it sort of gives the feeling that this cog is quite low to the um, artboard. I'm going to go and do stylize drop shadow again. Hit the preview so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to drop it down again to what it was, which was 5. And then now you can see we'll work on the opacity, so how opaque the shadow is. So the higher up it goes, the darker it gets. But it still keeps it blurry. Um, we can go all the way to 100%. So the actual shadow is 100% um, opaque, so it's got no transparency to it whatsoever, but because of the blur it still gives a blurry shadow, but you can see a bit more of the um, cog outline here on the edges. Um, let's say for example you chose that, but then oh, I don't really like it, I want to change it. You could um, go to appearance, which looks like a little sun with a dotted bit on the outside. You can see it's got there. The appearance is basically it's telling you the properties of that object. So it's got an effect here, the drop shadow. You can either delete it, so you just highlight it and then click the trash can and then that makes you start all the way from the beginning or command Z to undo. Or you double click onto drop shadow and then you can edit it as you go along. So we've got the preview on 
And then what I'm going to do is, let's say I want to make it much higher, so we'll make it say 20 and 20 so you can really see the difference. Right, look at this now. Can you see? It gives the impression now, because we've offset it so far to the left and to the bottom, that it looks as if this is much higher above the artboard and that can be quite handy if you want something that's quite dramatic and you really want something that's it's showing that it's right in front of you more or less and further away from the actual artboard um, if you wanted to do some text that sort of like shows it's gargantuan and massive and look how big and strong I am it's quite nice to put the strong light source at the bottom so it kind of looks like a floodlight and oh I look at these huge texts but we'll we'll talk about that more um, when we we show and um, when we start working on the um, I've lost the ability to speak today I do apologize it's not flowing is it um, with the text um, we'll do that but you can really see how you can um, quite dramatically change what an object looks like depending on what drop shadow you use so um, I can go back to drop shadow there and then just change it back to I mean you can even make it, let's just see, where it's dropped it down a lot more but then you know it's not actually that far off so the light source is closer to the centre if you see what I mean. So there you have it and by putting these um, together with the other shapes it gives it more of the look of the cogs being on top of each other and you know the the shadows go they don't interfere too much with the with the objects but it really sort of gives that feel of it being on top of each other rather than all stuck together and it gives that sort of more of a 3d look so next next episode we're going to talk we're going to put these all together i'm going to go off and put the default setting just because i like it but make the drop shadow come on to the bottom left and we'll arrange them next time and talk about composition and things like that. So until then, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye bye, peace and love.